Today's book is Rabid by Bill Wasik. Rabies, the world's most diabolical disease. I don't know if I agree with that entirely, but you know. It does kind of erase the uh, whole idea between human and animal. Because the human becomes very much like a ferocious beast. Although we've not yet had a human-to-human -human transfer of the disease, the virus, uh, because humans don't ordinarily attack f with their mouths. I mean, we don't run up to something and bite it. It's... no. We usually hit it with something. More into percussive control than anything else but still now rabies is also different in another way that it has nothing to do with your bloodstream pays no attention whatsoever no 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 it doesn't it creeps up your peripheral nerves and attacks your brain from there by avoiding the bloodstream, it also avoids your immune system. So that your little T-cells can't come and kill it. Because yes, it very much is a, a... It is a virus that can be killed. And yes, you'll be glad to know you don't have to take 13 shots to the stomach. No, 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 no. Four shots in your arm, and you're pretty much good to go. And yes, we have a vaccine for it. Thank you, Louis Pasteur. <coughs> but, in the United States, wildlife is where the rabies is. So, don't go thinking you can pet a raccoon in safely. You can't. Because raccoons, cheeky as they are, if they bite you, ah, uh, go see the doctor and get the four shots real quick. Okay? And you'll be fine. You'll be just fine. And most raccoons nowadays aren't in the rural areas because there's a ton of food in the cities. So that's where you're going. They're all so neatly there in the garbage cans or in those easily ripped up plastic bags. Food. Ah, that's what the raccoon wants. And then he can just curl up, you know, climb a tree and curl up and take a nap. It's a good life in the city, if you're a raccoon. But in other places of the world, dogs is where rabies lives. In the United States, pretty much all our dogs have been vaccinated. Because nobody wants that. Dogs, cats, vaccinated. Okay, cool. The other place where it lives in the United States are bats. It's really hard to get a bat to hold still long enough to get vaccinated. You can, you can imagine. Wildlife, yeah, well, if you can lease bait in the food and, and put the vaccine in the food, which we have been known to do, you can eradicate rabies over a wide area, which is a good thing. Because trust me, you don't want it. It's a very nasty sort of disease. And 
without the proper care or the vaccine or the, you know, being immunized against it, it is 100% fatal. Well, most of the time. There is the, uh, I believe it is the Michigan Protocol. But that's not highly recommended because after you've been returned to life, as it were, without the rabies, you have like anywhere from 53 days to five years to regain function because of the ketamine they use to put you into a coma. Because yes, they have to put you into a coma and, and monitor you closely and give you this drug, that drug, that support, support, in order to get you through it, allowing your immune system to just kill the thing. Oh dear, it's a mess. So it's better if you're going to be messing around in the greater outdoors or working with animals, especially mammals, although bats and, and uh, reptiles have been known to have it as well, um, get yourself the vaccine. Okay. Horses, get your vaccine, you're fine. You can immunize your livestock if they're mammals, they can get it. So, if you're going to mess around with mammals, make sure you're up to date on your rabies. Because it is nasty. It is very nasty. Because it causes inflammation of the brain Like, what do they call this? Encephalitis? It's bad stuff. Any case, this book is gruesome. <laughs> it's gruesome. Uh, they tell you about the various attacks that took place recently, in like 2010, 2012, they talk about the, uh, how certain people took their dog to Bali, yeah, which impacted the tourist trade, paradise, and yet rabies running rampant, why culling dogs doesn't work, I mean, they go around shooting dogs. Is because people are tender-hearted and they'll hide the little little Sancho's away until Sancho's takes a chunk out of them and gives them rabies. Unless, of course, the dog was vaccinated properly against it, then he doesn't get it and he can't transmit it. Why would you want rabies? Ugh. Bad as anything else. Jeez. But there's the book itself has a bit of a problem in the fact that they have to bring out how ancient rabies is and what it means to be rabid and how we use it in folklore and they mix it up with vampires and werewolves and please. Fortunately, they do go into detail about Louis Pasteur and all the work they did to make the vaccine so that kids who got bitten by dogs don't die, which is a good thing. So I mean, anybody wants their kids to die, foaming at the mouth as it were, 
No. Actually, all that is is just the excessive salivation. It's gruesome. It's just gruesome. They die raving. One man tried to take a gun to his wife. So she took a rifle to him. And then they put her on trial for his murder. All she had to do is say, rabies. He had rabies. Yes, the two guys who took the unvaccinated dog who carried rabies to Bali. They both died. And their buddy, their third buddy, also died of rabies. So, yeah, they got their comeuppance. Uh, so, yes. Uh, the destruction of the brain, whether it's a dog's or a person's, is not pretty. And that's exactly what rabies does. However, when it comes to getting medicine across the blood-brain barrier to the brain, you can hijack rabies. You take out the guts, just leave the shell, put in the medicines, and put it in a syringe and send it into the bloodstream. They injected anti-Parkinson's drugs into Parkinson-ridden mice by using a uh, hijacked rabies protocol. And it worked. So, they commandeered the rabies. So, we might actually have a way of getting to a prion and killing it. Which would be nice. Because prion diseases, or prion diseases, are the new thing. The new scary thing. But still, the book is just too full of folklore for my tastes. I would like a much more clarified version of how this disease goes up through the peripheral nerves and reaches into the brain from there. And it's so inconsistent. I mean, you could have instant rabies because it has such a variable incubation period. You could wait 10 years for the, by the time you've forgotten about the bite. And no bites from bats are rarely felt by sleeping humans. So if there's a bat in the house, get rid of it. Before it bites anybody. Bats should not be in your houses. There's a good reason for it. Leave them alone. Because if they bite, you won't know. And they carry rabies, almost all of them. Especially in the United States and Europe. Dogs for the rest of the world. All right, so. It's not the perfect book on the subject. 
After all, I mean, how many vampire stories can you read? And talk about things like modern pop culture, like The Omen and I Am Legend. Great, you know. Yeah, I know. We like to make these, you know, stories up. Dracula and all that. Oh, goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Any case. It is a nasty sort of thing. But apparently, rabies is pretty much unknown by your average doctor nowadays because it's not as prevalent as it used to be. And hardly anyone has ever seen it. So, it might be good to reacquaint yourself. So, especially if you have kids and you like to go out camping and all that happiness. Just so as you know what not to get. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps. And please do come again.